Welcome, welcome, human geographers. We are looking at mapchart.net. Uh, this is our tutorial for how to use said mapchart.net. So what we're looking at here is a map making software. Um, it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, but we do want to have a tutorial here so you can disseminate this to your students uh, or use it for yourself in order to familiarize yourself with this particular website. Uh, now we're looking at core plus maps in this case, so it's nothing terribly complicated, uh, but we do want to run through the steps to see exactly how this is going to go. So, first things first, you should find your way to our illustrious mapchart.net. And here we are. And the first thing you'll see on the top part of this page are a variety of tabs. You have so many options here for different maps. We have the world, and look at this. Countries and with microstates, detailed with provinces and states. It's a lot of information. Uh, we have Europe, we have Asia, we have <clears throat> the Americas, uh, Africa, the US. More maps, showcase, and the store. We're not going to go to the store, but you can go to the store if you like. So we're going to start with the U.S. and another video we'll look at the world just to see how that runs. Uh, we'll use the U.S. for this intro video because it's straightforward, it's pretty simple to run through, uh, and it's a good starting point for mapchart.net. So let's go to the States page, and here we have our U.S. of A. And all are 50 states, all right, Puerto Rico, we miss Puerto Rico. Um, we have the set 50. Now what we're going to look at next is how to fill in this map. And of course, students are going to need to know what they're filling in on the map itself, right? What is the topic for the map? Uh, we want them to create on a particular day for a particular lesson, uh, for an end of week assignment, etc. So we have all these different factors and facets for the units, right? Units one through five. Uh, so we can talk about political stuff. We can talk about uh, population stuff. That sounds good, actually. We're going to go with that. We're going to go with population densities. And I want to look at population density in the United States. And to do this, I need some more info. And so what I can do here is find my way to a new tab, right? And figure out exactly what densities I'm looking at. In this case, I'm looking at the US and the US densities. So what I'm gonna do is simply as I can Google US population, oh, and there it is, density map. Perfect. Uh, I want to look through my different images. These are going to bring up different maps for me. Uh, here we have a, ooh, 1876. That is not quite going to work for us. So I'm not going to go with that map. Uh, here I have a dot density map, uh, rather a choropleth map with very small shades. Uh, and this is talking about 2011. I want something more recent. Uh, here, another choropleth, but this is by county. It's a little too specific, right? I don't have that specificity in mapchart.net. So I'm looking for something that goes state by state. I look through, I look through, I look through, and oh, here's a very nice map. I want to expand this so I can have it in my face, so to speak. And here it is, right? My population density map. So from here on, I want to fill in my map on map chart using the information I found through the internet, right? Which is a plethora and it contains a plethora rather of information. So I'm going to go state by state, and I don't want to have students worrying about all these different shades. It's a lot of work. Uh, we want to be respectful of the time uh, that they have and the responsibilities they may have too. So really, I just want to look at the general trends, right, in terms of population density in the United States. So I'm going to look at probably three different areas. I'm going to look for three different facets of population density, rather. High density, medium density, and low density. So I'm going to look at these. So I, the shades they don't really matter uh, as far as which shades you pick for your map or which shades your students pick for their maps uh, as long as it's clear which shade or color corresponds to which density. Generally we're looking at lighter shades to darker shades whether it's in the same color spectrum or not uh, but we'll just go with this one because it's, it's nice and it's new and it's different from the original that they had. So I'm going to start by labeling my high density places, right, the darkest shades I have on the map. And I'm going to include the darkest of dark shades and these kind of uh, not as dark but uh, close enough shades as my high density spaces, right? So I'm going to come in here and I can hover over the states. I want to make sure I have my right color. Yes, I do. And then I'm going to start shading in my map. So California, high density. Florida, high density. Uh, North Carolina, Virginia, Washington, D.C., a little bitty right here, all right? Uh, above Maryland. There we go. Uh, Pennsylvania, Delaware, uh, is also in this space, right? New Jersey, and all these little states, right? And these smaller states, 
Uh, it's not so much that they have large populations, but the density is about the relationship between the objects in a space and the amount of space available, right? So the smaller space you have, the more that density is going to scale, uh, just because you don't have a lot of area to begin with. Uh, Connecticut. Uh, we're going to leave New Hampshire. We're going to leave uh, Vermont and Maine because those aren't quite in those same shades, right? Uh, New York, for sure. All right, Ohio, Illinois. And that seems to cover all our high density spaces. Yes, it does. Now from here on out, I wanna work through my different shades. And fortunately for me, it's gonna record every color that I place on the map. Now, of course, every map needs a legend, needs an idea of uh, what information is being presented by the map. So I'm gonna use my title for my legend here as just what I'm looking at, which is US population density. And I'm gonna label this one high density for my high density areas for population in the United States. Now from here on out, I'm gonna work my way through. I'm gonna go in the middle here, uh, maybe a little bit above the middle for my next shade. And these are gonna be my medium density states instead. So I'm gonna go with Washington, I'm gonna go with Texas, Louisiana, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky fried chicken, right? We're gonna build our chef here in a sec. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin. All right, it's also gonna fit in here. Colorado, Arizona, and da, da, da. here we have our New Hampshire. We can fill that in now as well. And I have a lot of other shades in between. And so what I'm gonna do here is make an executive decision. And I'm gonna include these kind of medium middle shades as my also medium density areas. Uh, and what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna include these kind of middle of the road states. Uh, instead, right? So I included Colorado and Arizona already. So I'm just going to finish that out and finish my chef here to include those as middle density and then we'll worry about the low density last. So I'm going to add in uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, Minnesota. And here I have my full chef, right? Here's his little hat, his face, uh, his belly and pants and feet, and his fried chicken that is ready, right? Kentucky Fried. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, West Virginia, Mountain Mama, and looks like Vermont as well. I right, can't quite tell here. I wanna see, ba -ba, yeah, Vermont and Maine as well. We can include Maine in here too. Mm -hmm. Actually, Vermont. Yeah, we're going to leave Maine for the low density. Right. So here should cover uh, Mississippi and Alabama, and that should cover all of my, what I would call medium density places. So I'm going to come here again to my legend, and once again, label my legend medium density. Now I have my final fill color, right? I'm just looking for a lighter shade in general, and I'm going to fill in the rest of these spaces as low density areas instead. Uh, I didn't forget about Alaska and Hawaii, right? Actually, I did, but I saw them right now and I reminded myself, which is good to look over your work, right? Because we want to make sure that we are covering our bases. So Alaska is for sure going to be a low-density space. Um, for the rest of these, looks like I forgot about Illinois, so I'm going to come back and fill in Illinois because I clicked that by accident, and then Maine here for the last one. All right, so Illinois is one of our high-density areas. I want to label my legend before I forget. Low-density. And here I can fortunately see that they pre-recorded my choices from before, so I can remember which color. If you are colorblind like myself, uh, it's an easy way to get by this info. And I need also Hawaii as my high density, and there I go. I have my map created. Now the easiest way to go about having students present you this map is probably just having them screenshot it. And here you can see that they don't have our lead in, so we have to go up here to where it says preview map and it'll give us this preview space instead where we can look at our map in full, right? And we can see our map as it has been developed, as it has been created, and we have all of our necessary information, the different map shades that we provided, as well as the density for our legend, and we can see that all of these have been included. Now, all that's left for us to do at this point, after this point, uh, it looks like we did forget a couple, right? Utah and Montana. So I want to come back here to my chart, and I can see another edit option, 
right? So I can go back to edit in the event that I did forget some spaces. And I can select my fill color. Again, it's pre-recorded, so I can fill in my Montana and my Utah space. Go back to preview. So I can, once again, double check my work and see that, yes, I have filled in all of my spaces. And here I have a wonderful population density map. Now again, screenshots probably the easiest way to go about this. The downloading gets kind of finicky, and then have students send you uh, this info through Teams uh, or through Remind or what have you uh, as part of an assignment uh, or as the assignment for one of these early days, right? Having them review these different trends uh, within the U.S. or otherwise. That does it for us today. Hopefully this helped you navigate through mapchart.net and gave you an idea of something that you can do with your kiddos uh, as they're running through these first weeks, uh, or at least these first few days of content. Uh, map creation, aside from being a fun way to utilize map software, uh, is pretty good for identifying these trends on your own. Right? So we do want to have some of this practice worked in, if possible. Uh, we'll see another video soon about uh, using the world map and how it's going to work. Uh, I recommend you preview this video first before going to the world map. And once you've done that, you have all the basics and the world map's gonna be a piece of cake, I promise you. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.